The Russo-Ukrainian war has been raging for more than a year now. Russia, the superpower which claimed that it could sort out Ukraine in a matter of weeks, is still embroiled in the war, flabbergasting mandarins, analysts, spooks and soothsayers alike. How could it be possible that a country allegedly powerful enough to influence the US elections is tottering against one that though well replenished is arguably the underdog? One of the reasons is Vranyo. Most large armies of the world are administered as large bureaucracies. There are strict hierarchies, laid down battle drills, elaborate planning, frameworks, attacker to defender ratio, equipment readiness status and hundreds of other parameters which go into developing strategic and operational plans. While more dramatic Elements such as daredevil strikes, heroic last stands make impressive nationalistic narratives. They seldom affect the outcome of wars, which depend much more on the war with all, which means the intelligent allocation of troops to missions and logistic support. Senior commanders responsible for implementing their leader's vision base their plans on information fed to them. And that is where Vranyo comes in. The Russian language has two words for line. Laws, which means falsehood, and Vranyo, which loosely translated is a straight-faced lie that both the teller and the listener pretend is true while knowing that it is in fact a lie. An example would be Pakistan's military denying any knowledge of Osama bin Laden in their backyard or Putin's claim of overwhelming support in the Russian elections. While all organizations have some degree of embellishment in their upward reporting, those in autocratic environments are especially susceptible because no one wants to be the bearer of bad news. Hitler, for example, was notorious for firing generals who pointed out ground reality, so senior commanders just went along with his delusional plans, deploying non-existent divisions for grandiose counterattacks. An insistence on a zero-error, no-failure mindset while ignoring aspects like just cause, morale, troop discipline, their fighting potency, etc. induces authoritarian and hierarchical organizations to start fudging reports. During peacetime, aspects such as the state of equipment, inventory of ordnance, battle readiness of units, etc. are exaggerated to ensure promotions and job security. On commencement of hostilities, Vranyo fogs the radar by deliberately ignoring red flags that challenge the Supreme Leader's appreciation of the battle. It is in battle, however, that Vranyo manifests itself most sincerely when skirmishes are reported as major battles and temporal tactical gains are recounted as strategic breakthroughs. Since commanders reinforce successes, inaccurate reporting commits more resources to failures perpetuating a vicious cycle. It is clear now that in all three stages of campaigns, planning, preparation and execution, the Russian High Command was practicing a high degree of Vranyo. While it could be argued that Russia miscalculated external factors like the fighting spirit of the Ukrainians or the extent of NATO support, there is no excuse for the inadequacies of supplies, logistics and combat capability of Russian troops. That was simply Vranyo at work, safeguarding seniors, hiding corruption and misleading the nation. Corporates face their own version of Vranyo, where bureaucratic hierarchies distance top leadership from ground reality. Multiple studies reveal that an alarming proportion of employees are disengaged and listless, with only a tiny fraction putting in their best. Yet. Parameters of employee morale, brand strength, organizational effectiveness, project progress, etc. are embellished on corporate dashboards. Activity is preferred as proof of outcome and busyness serves as a proxy for productivity. In some cases, insecure leaders catalyze Vranyo by underestimating competition, ignoring bad news and quashing dissent by punishing leaders who question them. The post-mortem of every major fraud, corporate debacle or political scandal shows that despite a multitude of people knowing the truth, Vranyo kept it hidden. Bernie Madoff, the perpetrator of the largest Ponzi scheme in history and Elizabeth Holmes, the once fetid CEO of Theranos, literally played with the lives of millions. That they were eventually indicted is besides the point. What is startling is that despite clear evidence being presented by dozens of investigations and whistleblowers, a culture of Vranyo protected their crimes for years. 
The board of Theranos, quoted as the most illustrious in the US corporate history, had luminaries such as George Shultz, Henry Kissinger, General Mad Dog, Mathias, William Perry and Rupert Murdoch, amongst others. In Indian folklore, good kings supposedly visited their empires in disguise to see the reality of their realms in first hand. Other leaders achieved the same by encouraging data-driven debates, candid war games, bringing in disruptors to challenge status quo and creating alternatives to the official channels of communication. They create an environment of psychological safety where the messenger is rewarded for the accuracy of the message rather than its alignment with preconceived notions or conformance to the hierarchy. Because, as Sun Tzu pointed out, all warfare is based on deception, not self-deception.